What's going on guys? Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. In this module, we're going to be talking about something called structs or structures. And we're going to start this off with the definition. We're going to go over some real world examples, and then we are going to hop into the, to the code to do some examples of our own. So let's go ahead and get started with our definition here. So a struct or structure is a template definition of properties and functions that, def that define a programmatic representation of an object or thing in an application. So this could be a user, a video game character, a product, a vehicle, so on and so forth, right? Like how do we represent these things programmatically in our applications? So let's hop over to the next slide and take a look at what that's gonna look like. So let's imagine we have some really simple user object that I'm gonna call it, or thing that we wanna represent programmatically in our app. So we see this all the time in apps like Instagram, Twitter, Tinder, whatever it may be. Anytime you sign up with an account and have to log in, you are considered a user of that application and there is data associated with you. Your name, your age, your, your username, your bio, whatever it may be, right? So this is how we're gonna represent that programmatically in our application. So let's imagine we have a really simple user object here. That's what I'm gonna to refer to these things as, guys. But you can think of it as a thing, right? I have a, I have a user in my app. What do I want that to look like? Well, each user is gonna have a username, a full name, and an age. And this is how we're gonna define that programmatically. We're gonna create this struct or structure. We're gonna call it a user. And then we are going to define the properties that this user is going to have. So we're gonna say, you're gonna have a username, a full name, and an age. All of the users in my application are gonna to have to have these three properties. And when I go to create this user, this is just considered a blueprint of the user object. Then I can create them and supply it with values. So for example, if I wanna create Batman as a user, I would say Batman is a user, his username is Batman, his full name is Bruce Wayne, his age is 35. Then let's say I wanted to create the Joker as another user. Well, it's the same thing. I just give each property different values, right? His username would be Joker, his full name could be Heath Ledger, and he could maybe be 32 years old. So let's talk about one more example before we get into the code. So let's uh, take another look at this Instagram clone that I've built here, and let's consider what a post is, right? A post is an object or a thing that we would wanna represent programmatically in our application. Now let's think about all of the metadata associated with a post, right? And sort of think about how you would structure that in your code. So a post has what? It has likes associated with it, right? And that's an integer. So you would say, let likes be an integer. And then it has a caption, which is gonna be a string. It has a username, which is a string. It has a, an image, which is some other type of data that we'll get into later. It has a username associated with it, like comments associated with it. All of these things are associated with this post object that we're gonna call it, right? So you could think about how you would define that using this sort of format here. And then this, is, this feed is ultimately just a list or an array of those posts that we can scroll through. So that's sort of the foundations of how you're gonna be developing mobile applications, guys. And we're gonna hop into the code now to really do some, get some practice with this stuff before we try to apply it when we start building apps. So let's go ahead and hop into Xcode now. All right, guys, so we are going to create yet another playground. And you guys should know how to do this by now. So we're gonna create a blank playground and we're gonna call this guy Structs, okay? So let's just go ahead and see if we can recreate that struct we talked about with the user object. So this is what it looked like. Let's just go ahead and type this out and see what we get. So we're gonna create a struct and we are actually gonna capitalize this user, guys. So um, structs always get capitalized. So function names and variable names and stuff, they have that sort of camel casing where you know first thing is lowercase and then everything else is uppercase after that. Structs, default naming convention, you capitalize them with the first letter. So we have our struct, which is a user. We are gonna say, let username be a string, let full name be a string, let age be an integer. So that's pretty straightforward, right? This is a data structure, it's called a user, and it has these three properties. So here's where it gets interesting, guys. Let's see if we can create a user and see what that looks like. So I'm gonna say, let 
user one, and then you can just say user, and you guys are gonna see some things pop up in your autocomplete window. So we're gonna go here, and it's gonna ask us to supply it with these values now. So this is how we create a user. So this is a very important distinction to understand. This struct that we have created here is the blueprint for what the user is going to look like in our application programmatically. That's our programmatic representation of a user. But much like when we write out a function, we still have to call it. When we create a data structure, it's just the blueprint for that object. We still have to create it and supply these things with values. So every time I go to create a user, this is what it's gonna look like. So this is what's known as creating an instance of my user object. So I'm gonna give my username Batman. Bruce Wayne is the full name, and we can say 35 is the age. So go ahead and see if you guys can create another user object. It can be whatever you want. Um, so just go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do that. And when you come back, this is sort of what you should get, guys. We're gonna say let user two equal user, and then we're just gonna open up our parentheses and hit enter for the autocomplete. And then we're gonna do the joker. And his name, he can be 36. And then, you know, let's create maybe one more. User three equals user, and oops, gotta get my autocomplete working. Iron Man and Tony Stark, and he's like, let's say, I don't know, 40. Okay, so we have three users. So now let's take a look at how we're gonna access information about each individual user. This part's pretty cool. So let's just go ahead and see if we can print out some information about some of our users. So I could say print user one is, and then we're just gonna go, go ahead and do some string interpolation and then uh, type out user one and then say, dot and then you guys are going to notice that we get access to each one of those properties that are associated with the user and if i you know ask for the age it's going to go and find user one and give me back the user that user's age if i were to do this for user two it would give me back 36 user three it would give me back 40 so let's go ahead and see how that works and we see that user one is 35 and you know let's go ahead and just copy and paste that and maybe say user two is and then we could say like user two dot username right so this is really interesting here guys and now we can see how we can sort of organize all of this information into a single data structure and then access that information about our user uh, with this dot notation so it uh, really ends up looking like this right so we have a user and that user has all of these properties or each individual user has all of those properties and then we can access those properties about each individual user just like that uh, another really awesome thing that we can do with data objects like this is we can put them into an array so like i could say like var users and we could make it like a blank array of users and i could say users.append user one users.append user two, users dot append user three. Okay, so now I have this users array and you guys might be wondering, okay, well like what might you do with that? Well, let's take a look at this Instagram application once again. And this list of users here is going to be represented programmatically just like we see here with this array. So this list is essentially just an array of users and we are looping through that list and displaying each user on our screen here. And we're obviously gonna go over how to do that once we start building apps, but this is the foundation for how that works, right? We have these data structures, we place them inside of an array, and then we can ultimately display them in a list. So now that we've gone through you know, some of the basics of data structures, I just wanna create a couple more examples and so, show you guys a little bit more functionality about how they're gonna work as well. So next up, guys, I want to see if we can create a data structure to represent a vehicle programmatically. So I want you guys to go ahead and just pause the video and see if you can create a vehicle struct and give it some properties about things you might think you would need to represent a vehicle programmatically. Like a user had a username, a full name, and an age. Try to think about what you would want a vehicle to have associated with it or the information you would want associated with it. And then come back and we'll do it together. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and say struct vehicle. 
And this is what you should have got to start. You, you could you could call it whatever you want, car, vehicle, doesn't matter. Um, and I'm going to make this pretty simple. Like I'm just going to give it a make, a model, a year, and maybe horsepower, right? So we can say let make, and that's going to be a string. Let model be a string. Let year be an integer, and let horsepower be an integer as well. Okay, so you know, hopefully you guys vehicle looks something like this, like you definitely want to make the model in the year in there. You can obviously make this a little bit more advanced, like you could have number of doors, you could have whether it's electric or not, like, right, you could add maybe uh, let is electric. And that could be a Boolean variable, like, the basic idea behind this guys is I want you to get some practice with how to represent things in your applications programmatically. So think of like a real life object and then think about how to translate that into code. That's a foundational skill that any good programmer is gonna have. How to make real world things be represented in a program. But you know, we're gonna stick with this for now and let's go ahead and just create some instances of our vehicle. So when I say instance, once again, that means I'm just gonna go ahead and create a vehicle structure. So I'm gonna say like let V1 equal vehicle. And like I said, guys, this is referred to as an instance of this data structure. This is the blueprint for that vehicle. This is an instance of that vehicle. So let me maybe make it a Ferrari. This could be a 488, 2019 horsepower, 600, okay? And then we could just copy and paste that, call this guy like V2, maybe make this a Lamborghini. And then this guy could be like Huracan. Year is 2021 horsepower. Maybe let's make it like 650. So uh, I know those numbers aren't accurate. If any gearheads are out there, you know, don't get mad at me. What I want us to do next, guys, is add a function to this vehicle structure that's going to help get us back some information about the car. Okay, so this is gonna illustrate the concept of a struct level function. So if you guys remember from our definition, we see that a struct is a template definition of properties and functions that define a programmatic representation of an object. So let's just imagine we wanna write a function to help us get back the information of a car to maybe display it to a user in like a nice sentence or something, right? So let's write a func and make sure it's a part of your vehicle data structure. And then we're gonna say like get vehicle info. And we're just gonna like write a print statement out. We're gonna say like, hey, this, we wanna say like, this is a Ferrari 488 that was made in 2019 and it has 600 horsepower. Let's see if we can write that out. So we can say, this is a uh, make model. So this is a Ferrari 488 that was made in, and then we're gonna pass in the year, and it has horsepower, horsepower. So now let's take a look at how we're gonna use this function, okay? So I would, I'm only able to access this function through instances of my data structure, right? Because this function is contained within this vehicle struct. So I can only access it through something like V1 or V2. So I have to create an instance of my vehicle and then I can call this function on that. So let's see how that works. I'm gonna say v1.getVehicleInfo. You guys see it comes up right there. And let's go ahead and hit run. And we can see that that gives us back exactly what we want, right? This is a Ferrari 488 that was made in 2019 and it has 600 horsepower. So how exactly is that working, right? So we're passing in all of these properties here and it's giving us back all this information that we want. Well, we are calling this function sort of through extension of this vehicle one that we've created. And in this instance, the make is Ferrari, the model's 488, year 2019, horsepower 600. So when the vehicle, this function here, is looking at all of those properties, it's gonna say, hey, I, I wanna pass in the make here. And for this instance of that vehicle, it's a Ferrari. When I want to pass in the model, in this case, it's 488. And then it, same, you know, for the year and the horsepower. Now, if I say v2.getVehicleInfo and go ahead and print that out, 
it's obviously going to give me all of the information about the, the second vehicle. And the reason behind that is even though we are passing in, you know, these sort of generic properties of make, model, year, and horsepower, in this instance, those things are equal to these values, right? So once again, guys, this illustrates the concept of this be, just being a blueprint for my vehicle object. All vehicles will have these properties. And when I create the vehicles, I have to supply those properties with the values that they need in order to actually create the thing. So this is the blueprint. These are the instances of where we are creating that vehicle or that object. And it was the same with our user. And that's going to wrap it up for our module on structs, guys. We got some really good practice with how to represent real life things or objects programmatically. In the next module, the final one of the course, we're going to be doing some exercises that combine all of the concepts we have learned thus far in this fundamentals course. It's going to give us a better understanding of how all of this stuff works together. Real big picture stuff. It's so important to make sure that you guys have a solid foundation in programming and problem solving before you move on to developing apps. So once we do that, you'll have everything you need to hit the ground running and start building apps like a pro. I see so many developers fail when they start trying to start building apps too quick because like I said, that's obviously the fun stuff. You wanna see something come to life. You wanna build that app idea you've had for forever. You wanna start making money right away. But if you skip the fundamentals, it will always come back to haunt you in the end. So let's go ahead and get started with this next module, guys. The final one of the course where we're gonna be doing some exercises that really brings all of this stuff together.